it's very important to have a you know very um, focused approach about uh, and a dedicated effort to about building the international collaboration. Pancreatic cancer, ovarian cancer, mm -hmm. those are all deadly cancers that needed new clinical trials. Precision medicine, you know, um, is mm -hmm. all about um, finding uh, the uh, right patient, the right drug, and treat patient with the um, right, uh, you know, uh, pathways. My passion for the next um, several years and uh, is uh, to really build an ecosystem, systematically helping the young companies, young entrepreneurs. And the goal is about getting the most innovative um, therapies and technologies to uh, patients as quick as we can. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Onco Influencers on Onco Daily. My name is Gemma Ragelian, and I'll be your host today. We have a very special guest, Dr. Sujamba. Hello, Dr. Ba. Hello. How are it's you? It's a pleasure having you today. Thanks. Fine. How are you? Very good. It's my honor to be here. So Dr. Ba is the president and CEO of the National Foundation for Cancer Research and the founder and CEO of the Asian Fund for Cancer Research. She is a co-founder and the founding board member of the Global Coalition for Adaptive Research and CEO and co-founder of the AIMHI Accelerator Fund. She has a long list of student achievements about which I hope we'll learn more. Uh, today from Dr. Ba herself. So Dr. Ba, could you please tell us more about your journey and what led you to your current roles? Yes, wonderful. Uh, I love uh, talking with a uh, young generation of scientists and leaders. Um, I was trained as a chemist and I mm -hmm. came uh, to the United States uh, in 1986 uh, to pursue my PhD at the University of Pennsylvania. And back then my knowledge about the world, about the United States is very, very minimal. So you can imagine the obstacles that uh, I had to overcome in terms of uh, language shock, cultural shock, financial yeah, shock, exactly. shock, and uh, homesick, uh, all kinds mm -hmm. of things. But uh, American is a land of opportunities. So I had a great, um, friends and great mentor at the University of Pennsylvania. And after I uh, got my PhD, I realized what I really wanted to do, and which is very important, just don't follow the trend. Back then, all my contemporaries, um, um, they all uh, wanted to, to pursue the postdoc track and um, get uh, academic uh, careers. And uh, very early on, I realized I really liked to, to um, work with people I had a variety of uh, uh, projects and um, have a very wide uh, interest. And I like to mm -hmm. see uh, my um, research and uh, my interests uh, get applied to, uh, um, uh, to the real society, real world. And that's why I uh, choose uh, to pursue um, a career in the industry. So I joined uh, a large chemical company, Arco Chemical Company, after I graduated from Penn. And uh, from there, uh, I got a tremendous um, amount of mentoring and training and opportunities. And, and uh, I was uh, given the opportunity to really learn all the industries, all the sectors at the uh, Arco Chemical Company. And uh, from there, I realized now I really wanted to do the specialty uh, chemical um, uh, work in industry instead of the commodity, you know, very old, um, um, uh, large scale of, of chemical um, uh, products, uh, chemical industry. I wanted to, to do something really important for um, uh, people's uh, life and uh, life and death. So I chose mm -hmm. uh, um, to uh, pursue uh, uh, career in, uh, closer to pharmaceutical industry. So I joined a, a consulting firm and I was directing a division that uh, works with a chemical specialties, the drug intermediates and uh, fine chemicals. So I really su um, support, you know, supply the um, uh, drug uh, pharmaceutical companies. And uh, I have the specialty um, um, 
field for market research and um, business development in uh, uh, drug molecules. And, and uh, I did um, uh, two years, uh, got a tremendous amount of uh, insights. Can you tell us what is your inspiration personally? So, you know, I always um, um, have, a, a, have a, you know, view that if you do something, you really mm -hmm. wanted to do something well, you know, um, and uh, then uh, have an impact, have some influence. Mm -hmm. So when I joined the National Foundation for Cancer Research, um, I wanted to, you know, uh, look at uh, these uh, wonderful opportunities uh, and this wonderful organization, which was already 25 years old and uh, mm -hmm. uh, with a great um, lineage of history. The co-founders, uh, Albertson Georgi, um, Dr. Albertson Georgi, the Nobel Prize winner, and also wow. uh, very accomplished uh, retired entrepreneurs uh, and uh, retired um, attorneys. And uh, I, they had the vision, and which I, I totally bought into it right away, is they had the uh, vision is we needed to support, uh, provide um, the funding to the scientists who uh, are willing to explore the uncharted area, the new uh, frontier and a new hypothesis. And usually those research areas um, are not easy to get funding because when you apply for government funding, you have to have some preliminary data in right. order to get the funding. So we took the risky, high risk, high impact um, uh, approach to, to go about. And that, that was one thing I truly bought into it when I first joined. And, and that, that kind of um, philosophy uh, carried me all the way uh, for the last um, 26 years. Because, um, you know, if you are um, um, passionate about certain things, you always look at what can I do better to move the needle? What can I do to make an impact? Where are the unmet needs? So from the research, right, we, we uh, figure out uh, very early on that uh, we not only needed to uh, provide uh, research funding to the individual scientists, we as an organization mm -hmm. will have to distinguish ourselves from the rest of other charities, other organizations by uh, really focusing on facilitating, supporting, and building the international collaboration. And uh, I consider myself the citizen of the world. So I um, uh, felt it's very important to have a you know, very um, focused approach about uh, and a dedicated effort to about building the international collaboration. So from that, NFCR uh, uh, has, uh, has been um, um, consistently pushing uh, this um, uh, this direction, and that's how um, we realized um, back in the two, uh, early two thousand, the Asian scientists they they desire to collaborate with the Western scientists. The Western scientists desire to collaborate with Asian scientists, but mm -hmm. the funding back then in from Asia is a very limited world, very limited, and um, we we needed to have the so-called glue funding, you know, the funding mm -hmm. that glue the collaboration together, even though many times uh, people have the desire to colla uh, collaborate, but they have the funding, they can only do what they wanted to do on that continent, same uh, the other way. So where mm -hmm. can you find some funding that uh, are specialized, like, um, um, supporting, especially supporting this uh, global collaboration. So that's how I realized um, Hong Kong people are very generous and the Hong Kong citizens are very giving. And they are also um, really interested uh, in uh, learning new things, uh, mm -hmm. trying to understand uh, the new knowledge, the new frontiers. So that's how I founded uh, Asian Fund for Cancer Research. It's been 18 years now. And as a, so these two organizations across the ocean really uh, have um, um, put the efforts together and build some really internationally important um, 
uh, platform, two pro, uh, two programs. For example, uh, when um, when China um, first opened up, they um, they wanted to uh, follow um, the protocol of um, uh, setting up the bio uh, depository uh, bank, mm -hmm. you know, the tissue bank, and um, but a very limited knowledge along the line and very limited um, resources. We actually put a, a think tank, um, a steering committee that consists of industry people, research people, clinician, and, um, and, and a patient advocate. And uh, we, we help build the first uh, tissue bank um, uh, in China uh, at the Tianjin Cancer Hospital with the strong support uh, from the uh, hospital uh, leadership, uh, Dr. Xi Hao, and also the Ministry of Health and Science Technology. And that, uh, that uh, tissue bank um, was used as a role model for many uh, Chinese hospitals uh, to follow um, to set up uh, the tissue banks a protocol and the way um, also um, undertaken and supported um, uh, the global scale of gastric cancer. So, and mm -hmm. then uh, the another platform you probably heard a lot is the GPM Agile. Yeah, adaptive uh, global trial for uh, brain cancer. So we actually supported, we were the first founders that supported the build out of this very innovative revolutionary trial system. It's a biomarker driven adaptive um, a multi uh, arm uh, trial system that can really um, um, save the patient's um, resources, get to um, the, um, get through the pipeline quicker and to deal with those most deadly uh, cancers like a brain cancer, um, um, GBM. And now after um, uh, 10 years from the first um, uh, day of um, idea generating to a, to a fully operational uh, trial system by Global Coalition for Adaptive Research. And this uh, knowledge, this system now uh, is being applied to um, uh, use for pancreatic cancer, ovarian cancer, mm -hmm. those are all deadly cancers that needed in new clinical trials. So that's that's where I um I can say that you you in order to um uh, be passionate about things, uh mm -hmm. you know, and do well um in your career, you have to really figure out how you can make a difference. And stay with it. Don't get uh, discouraged uh, too, too often. Any, uh, so now, you know, I mentioned uh, several programs. Uh, in order to make impact, and the journey of it is not easy. It's not just the funding. You get the funding, uh, it gets done. No, it's not. There are so many obstacles, challenges, barriers to overcome, uh, and bring um, people work together uh, with a common goal. Um, and um, it, it takes about, you know, eight, 10 years to see the real fruition. Anything that's worthwhile doing, it would take that long. So don't give up uh, easily. I, that's one advice I, I have for the young people. Wonderful. So all of us, they are looking forward to Bio Hong Kong. 2024, and I know that uh, you are an organizing co-chair at the City UAFCR Symposium on Precision Medicine and Digital Medicine. So could you give us an overview of the symposium and what is the main initiative, what we are going to talk about more in details during Bio Hong Kong? Yes, yes. So precision medicine, you know, um, is mm -hmm. all about... Um, finding uh, the uh, right patient, the right drug, and treat patient with the um, right, uh, you know, uh, pathways. So um, precision medicine uh, right now um, uh, is becoming the norm in the Western world. Mm -hmm. But it's um, still um, at the front um, end of um, treatment uh, in uh, Asia. So we wanted to bring all the thought leaders uh, from uh, Western uh, um, countries and um, and have this dialogue with the Asian scientists 
and then with the public, you know, to uh, to share what had been done um, uh, in um, in the U.S., for example, and what are the lear uh, learnings we have, the lessons we learn, the foresight that uh, we have, and insights for the future. And I thought it would be very good to have this uh, dedicated uh, precision medicine consortium. And we also realized that precision medicine now really needed to be coupled with digital and AI approach. Mm -hmm. So this is the first time we actually put together precision medicine and digital mm -hmm. medicine together. So we are hoping to promote a more interactive uh, dialogues and uh, inject some new thinkings and um, um, and um, uh, promote some uh, um, collaboration. And not only that, uh, I have a second day uh, track and mm -hmm. uh, I uh, wanted to bring um, a different angle uh, to Hong Kong is, you know, entrepreneurship uh, in US um, from the scientists, uh, from the scientific um, uh, community have been have been very uh, successful right? since the 1970s in the US uh, and the uh, scientists have been um, very actively involved in building, you know, in translating their discoveries and building successful mm -hmm. uh, biotech companies. So I had this uh, um, very brilliant, uh, famous two scientists from uh, Harvard uh, and from uh, uh, um, Colorado and Dr. Um, Raju Kuchilopati and also Dr. Leslie Leswand. And they both have built billion dollars biotech companies. So I ask them to share their learning, uh, you know, building uh, the billion dollar companies from their innovation, from their research, what they have learned, what insights they can share. And so they can share with the young generation of the scientists or entrepreneurs and uh, how to uh, really go about this uh, from research to entrepreneurship. So I hope um, you will join us. It should be very uh, exciting. Really, really looking forward to it. And you are also among the speakers. Your talk will be mainly about the FCR. Yes, I'm mainly, uh, I'm more like uh, about introducing the, the concept think. of um, collaboration, you know, uh, working together and mainly about the goal of uh, um, the organizations and the goal of the uh, symposium. This is uh, my uh, third um, special track within uh, Bio Hong Kong. Uh, when Bio Hong Kong first uh, launched um, uh, back in 2022, um, I was invited by uh, the chairman of Hong Kong Bio, Dr. Albert Yu, to, to organize a closed door forum, um, inviting the um, uh, speakers uh, from um, um, the Western world, from Hong Kong, from China, talk about um, what can we do to make Hong Kong the next uh, hub uh, for uh, life sciences. So I have a clo um, I have a, a white paper after that uh, about you know people talked about the advantages of Hong Kong and then um, disadvantages or, or shortcomings of Hong Kong. What we can do to improve uh, Hong Kong's um, um, you know uh, uh, position or access to become the world uh, the next. Um, you know, hub or hub. Um, hot spot for life sciences. And then last year we have a um, track, also symposium. Last year is really about the in, um, um, the innovative uh, therapies and diagnosis uh, uh, going on. And this is my third uh, track. Wonderful. So Dr. Ba, uh, to conclude our interview today, I want to give one last question. What are your personal hopes for the impact of AFCR and NFCR? Well, um, so um, we didn't touch uh, uh, on the Aim High Accelerator Fund that uh, we founded um, five years ago. So mm -hmm. um, 
what I um, the last uh, what I have done the last uh, twenty five years um, is really about building this global uh, network, right? Mm-hmm. To advance, um, to continue to support uh, innovative research from NFCR side and the AFCR side, but just having the innovative research are not enough, and we have to do a better job. Uh, to help the innovation and discoveries out of the lab, going to the bedside, right? Going to the clinic. So my my um, um, passion was about really building out an ecosystem that uh, not only we uh, support research, but we incubate the innovations mm-hmm. out of lab and uh, going to the startup, and um, uh, you know incubate those uh, those uh, young companies. Um, brave entrepreneurs. And mm-hmm. traditional VC um, money or pharmaceutical um, uh, business deal partnership money don't come in until the companies uh, have um, human data. You know, oftentimes mm-hmm. they wanted to see phase two data. You know, if you're lucky, you, you know, you have phase one data that shows the signal of efficacy. Mm-hmm. And that's the time more money will come in. Right now, with the um, with the advancement of technology and the explosive knowledge we have, the scientific knowledge we have, there's so many new innovative um, um, young companies. Um, you know, basically in the valley of the death before phase uh, one, before they can get the series A. And then my passion for the next um, several years and uh, is uh, to really build an ecosystem systematically helping the young companies, young entrepreneurs, and, and bring uh, the network, um, utilizing the impact investment, mentor philanthropy, and a uh, um, collected effort of giving the funding uh, critical to those young uh, entrepreneurs, the access to the um, uh, advisory network, access to uh, leadership you know, uh, guidance, and so building uh, this ecosystem. So I have this uh, whole um, whole uh, areas, uh, critical areas in in the uh, you know most uh, um, um, high risk, um, high impact area, and that's where I like to see we truly have a uh, um, you know sustainable, um, very um, um, productive ecosystem to help the researchers, entrepreneurs, and, and the goal is about getting the most innovative um, therapies and technologies to uh, patients as quick as we can. And um, that's my goal. Thank you very much, Dr. Ba. I believe that this interview will serve as a true inspiration and motivation for young scientists, professionals, Whoever works in the field of oncology, thanks for the great work that you do. And looking forward to meeting you during Bio Hong Kong 2024. Thank you so Fantastic. much for joining Thank us you today. For this opportunity. Yes, keep on going. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to Onca Daily on YouTube. Hit the bell icon to stay updated.